Hello, my name is Matthew and I'm the president of Squishy Circuits. In this video, we're going to go over some of the basics of Squishy Circuits, including what you will need, building basic circuits, getting more creative and advanced, navigating the website, and more. This video will be especially useful for those instructing Squishy Circuits, such as teachers or STEM club leaders. First, a little background. Squishy Circuits was founded in 2011 by Dr. Anne-Marie Thomas at the University of St. Thomas in St. Paul, Minnesota. Anne-Marie runs the Playful Learning Lab, which explores a connection between how we can learn through playing, no matter what age or ability we may be at. Before Squishy Circuits, learning basic electrical concepts usually involved wires, bulbs, and batteries, which are unfamiliar to most people. But by using modeling dough, we remove that unfamiliarity, and uh, we add an element of creativity and fun. I joined the team in 2012, just after Anne-Marie gave a TED Talk on Squishy Circuits. The emails from all over the world flooded in, asking where they could buy kits. Shortly after, I started a company selling the materials to do Squishy Circuits at homes, schools, libraries, and more. Since then, we've sold to every state in the United States and over 30 countries. Anne-Marie continues to do incredible work with the Playful Learning Lab. They have numerous new and ongoing projects, including developing resources with rock band OK Go, creating STEM and STEAM curriculum for deaf students, hosting free virtual conferences, and much more. I encourage you to take a look at their website. Now, back to Squishy Circuits. Squishy Circuits uses conductive and insulating modeling dough to teach electrical circuits in a fun, hands-on way. Using it, we can bring our dough creations to life using lights, motors, and beepers. Squishy Circuits can be done at all ages, but we primarily focus on grades three through fives, since that is when electricity is usually introduced in school. Let's get sculpting our first circuit. For this, we will need a conductive dough, which is any color dough besides white, a battery holder with four AA batteries, and an LED light, which stands for light emitting diode, and they produce light when electricity flows through them. First, let's add batteries into our battery holder. Turn the battery pack upside down so that the label is on the back side. Push down on the triangle located at the bottom and slide upwards removing the cover, and insert the four AA batteries, the same orientation that's printed on the plastic. To replace the cover, set it on top and slide it downward. Slightly depress in the triangle region, and it will click back into place. You can flip it over and make sure that your battery holder is working by briefly switching it on and double checking to see that the orange indicator light is glowing. Let's switch it back off. Next, we need to use conductive dough. And we need two separate pieces of dough. I am going to roll out two snakes. Making sure the pieces aren't touching, we're gonna to add the terminals from our battery into the two pieces of dough. We'll put one into one piece and the other terminal into the other piece of dough. Electricity flows in a circuit, which is like a circle. Right now, electricity can't flow through our circuit because we have a gap or a hole. We call this an open circuit. To close our circuit and to complete the path, we can use our LED. You'll notice that one of the terminals is longer than the other on the LED. Separate the two terminals and the longer terminal has to go into the Play-Doh with the red battery holder wire. Now, when we turn on the battery holder, the LED lights up because we've completed our circuit. Electricity is flowing from the battery holder, through the wire, through the conductive dough, through the LED, and then back to the battery holder in a circle. We call this a completed circuit. If your LED isn't lighting up, Try to take it out and flip it around. You'll notice when I do that, the LED turns off. That's because electricity can only flow one direction through an LED. That property is called polarity. When making squishy circuits, we generally just try the other way if it doesn't turn on the first time, because when those terminals are separated, it can be very difficult to tell which is a little bit longer than the other. We offer a variety of kits, starting at the light kit. It's our most basic, and it provides a conductive dough, battery holder, and 15 LEDs. It's enough to get a simple circuit to light up like we just did. Next is the standard kit. It adds two more colors of conductive dough, an insulating dough, and a buzzer. 
The deluxe kit includes seven colors of conductive dough, an insulating dough, 40 LEDs, a motor, switch, two buzzers, and more. It's our most complete kit. We also offer the Groove Kit. It provides 80 LEDs and 10 each of battery holders, motors, buzzers, and switches. We usually recommend that this kit is to be used for up to 30 students, since that would mean students are working in trios. You can also make your own squishy circuits materials, but they won't have some of our features, such as aluminum terminals that resist corrosion, or short circuit protection that prevents overheating batteries. All of the kits incorporate the same components. The bigger kits just incorporate more parts that allow you to create more exciting squishy circuits. A full comparison of each kit is on the website. Let's investigate some of those additional components and add them to our circuit. In the last example, we created a closed circuit that lit up an LED. What would happen if we took that circuit and touched the two pieces of dough together? When we do that, we see that the LED greatly dims or goes out completely. That's because there's now a short circuit or another path for the electricity to flow through. Right now, the electricity is flowing from the batteries into the dough, and instead of going through that LED, it's just going to the other piece of dough because they're touching, and it's going back into the battery holder. To prevent short circuits, we can separate it, and our LED turns right back on. We also have the white insulating dough. Insulators don't let electricity go through them. And so I can use this dough to prevent short circuits. If I put the white dough in between and insert the LED back, it still continues to grow brightly because the electricity has to go around the layer of white, forcing it to go through the LED. Just like the LED, the other components have two terminals because electricity has to flow through something to cause it to operate. These terminals are mounted at the end of the wires, just like the battery holder has. If we add the motor to our circuit, we can add motion to our squishy circuits. You may have to give it a small push to get it started. You'll notice that motors do not have polarity like LEDs, and that if you switch the terminals, it causes the motor to spin in the opposite direction. To create sound, there are two buzzer options. The square mechanical buzzer creates a vibrating buzz. It's louder if you hold it against a rigid surface, such as a tabletop. And the round piezoelectric buzzer creates a beep when inserted into the circuit. You'll notice that, just like the LEDs, electricity can only flow one way through the buzzers. The red wire has to be placed with the red wire from the battery holder, and the black wire has to be placed with the black wire of the battery pack. Finally, we have the switch. The switch operates a little differently by allowing electricity to flow through it, or by breaking the circuit and stopping the flow of electricity. We have the LED still operating in our circuit. Let's break it. Now we have an open circuit because electricity can't get from this piece of dough to this piece. But if we insert the switch, now we have a path for the electricity to continue if the switch is turned on. One is on, and you'll see the LED is turned on. Zero is off, and it turns the LED off because electricity can't flow through it when it's in this state. Your light switch at home works the exact same way. Now that we have a good understanding of how electricity flows, conductors and insulators, and the components Squishy Circuits uses, let's get way more creative. For the first example, we're going to make a snail with light up eyes. Start by selecting a shell color and rolling it into a snake. Then roll up the snake to create a shell. You can decorate the shell however you'd like. Select a body color and form it so that it is the same length as the shell. Then place a piece of white insulating dough over the body dough and set the shell on top of it. Mold the dough into a snail shape. You'll notice the snail is similar to our basic circuit. Two pieces of colored conductive dough separated by a white insulating dough. Place two LED eyes into the dough, connecting the two pieces of conductive dough. Remember, LEDs have polarity, so the longer terminal of the LEDs should go into the body dough and the shorter terminal into the shell. 
Insert the battery pack terminals with the red wire going into the body and the black wire going into the shell. Turn on the battery holder and watch your snail come to life. As a second example, let's create a beeping tugboat. Take a piece of conductive dough and mold it into a boat shape. Select another piece of dough and create a cabin that will sit within the boat. Add windows, stripes, buoys, and more to your boat. Get as creative as you'd like. Using the white insulating dough as a separator, join the cabin onto the boat. You'll see, again, that this circuit is comprised of two pieces of conductive dough separated by the insulating dough. Take a beeper and place it on the cabin. The red wire should be placed into the boat and the black wire placed into the cabin. Finally, connect the battery holder matching the wire colors of the buzzer. Turn on the battery holder and catch the attention of every boat and person nearby. With squishy circuits, the possibilities are truly endless. If you can mold it out of dough, you can bring it to life. The Squishy Circuits website has lots of fantastic resources to help get you started. Navigate to squishycircuits.com and click on the Projects tab. There, you will find a list of example projects. We are constantly adding more, so keep checking back. If you click on a project, it brings up a more advanced view that shows an instructional slideshow, a video, and a link to download and print the instructions. The website also includes other free printable resources, which can be accessed by clicking the Education tab. Notably, you will find the Quick Start Guide in a variety of languages, and the Educator's Guide, which goes over lots of information covered in this video and expands into different types of circuits and schematics. The battery holder is required for every squishy circuit to provide power, so the number of battery holders you will need depends on the size of the group that you have. Ideally, every participant has their own battery holder, but pairs or trios do work. The dough and other components can be shared among everyone since not every squishy circuit needs a motor or a buzzer or a switch. But you'll want to have ample LEDs since there seems to be a strong correlation. The more LEDs in your circuit, the cooler it is. To get participants started, we usually go over the basic circuit like we just did in this video. We allow participants to try it for themselves. In a classroom setting, students can diagram their circuit in a lab journal and explain key vocabulary, such as open and closed circuits, conductors versus insulators, and more. After everyone has successfully created and understands their basic circuit, things can get much more interesting. We usually have printed project guides from the website for everyone to try, but we also encourage participants to create their own original squishy circuits. Often, we challenge each participant to make something that fits with an overall theme. For example, our theme could be in the sky. One person could create an airplane, another a bird, and someone else a rainbow. Everyone shares their squishy circuit during show and tell time at the end. Or other times we create a story based on everyone's circuit creations. For example, maybe the snail we made earlier took the tugboat to go visit his friend the elephant who lives on an island. Each participant gets to add their squishy circuits to the story, which can turn into quite an adventure. Most of the parts used for squishy circuits are reusable, but over time the LEDs and dough will have to be replaced. After a few hours of use, the LED terminals will begin to break off and corrode due to the salt in the dough. Replacing them is fairly inexpensive. We use 10 millimeter diffused lens LEDs that we have chosen for their brightness and quality. They can be purchased from our website, but you can use any LED available from other sources. As an alternative, we also offer LEDs that have built on wires just like our other components do. These will last a long time, but have a higher price point. Over time, the dough will get mixed together and will need replacing. We offer the dough kit on our website, which has seven conductive doughs and one insulating dough. Or you can use most commercially available modeling doughs as the conductive dough because they also contain salt. The other option is to make the dough. We have created a recipe that uses common ingredients available at your grocery store. Our website has the full recipe and instructions. 
If you have the available time with your participant, it can be really fun to make the dough one day and then use it to create squishy circuits the next. Measuring, stirring, and kneading dough are also fun, hands-on activities, but you'll need access to a stove or a hot plate to make the recipe. We have a recipe for the insulating dough, but suggest that you purchase our insulating dough or use commercially available sculpting clays. The insulating dough recipe works in a one-time use scenario, but stores poorly. The in insulating dough we sell does not dry out, but it can stiffen. Simply break a piece off and knead it back to a dough consistency or place it in the microwave for a few seconds. That wraps up our introduction to squishy circuits. I hope that this video has provided a good starting point. After a bit of trial and error, you'll be a squishy circuits expert. If you have any questions or concerns along the way, please do not hesitate to contact us. Thank you for watching and enjoy squishy circuits.